to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, my brother Pooh Bear has made it to the program. If you're like, yo, I know I know that name, but I don't know why I know that name. Whew, this guy's put giving us a lot of great music, man. Well, and this and this is a notable interview, Pooh Bear, because Ebro pretends to be friends with everyone when they're here. Oh, friend of the show, my good friend, but, and it's generally a lie. This uh, is actually Ebro's yeah, good friend. Absolutely, it's my brother for sure. Yeah. Uh, I am actually uh, the godfather of his daughter. Yeah, yes, see, I told y'all, this is real. Well, well, <laughs> and, and and I had to ask him the other day because you know Giselle's really young. I'm like, yo, I don't think I'm being a good godfather. He was like, yo. Oh, the job doesn't really require that yeah, much. It, it doesn't yeah. happen you until I'm to, not here. Yeah, you're crushing it. Yeah, we hope you never have we to really do more than you're doing right now. Yeah. You're like a backup quarterback. Exactly. We don't want you to play. We don't want you to we play. Don't want you to <laughs> play. Yeah. So Pooh Bear has a song, Favorite Human, we're going to play. Um, the last project I think you put out was 2018. So the first question I have for you, yeah. is so much success as a songwriter, right? Like, I mean, you uh, wrote, Justin Bieber's part on Despacito. You wrote a lot of records for Justin in general. You've written for Usher. You've written 112. Would you write for 112? Um, anywhere, Peaches and Cream. Oh, Dance yeah, with me. I did! Um, <laughs> uh, Those are big ones. How old were you when this happened? When you Anywhere, I was 16. What? I was in high school, yeah. Um, I'm get out of here. But how, yeah. does, how does a high school <clears throat> student get to that point? I was that age when it came uh, out. Oh, wow. How is this humanly possible? Um, Honestly... My cousin Bear discovered 112, and he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna put you with the guys, and if you guys have a chemistry, it might work with you." Wait, sorry. Well, and here's how your so, cousin named Bear. Yeah, his cousin named Bear. Bear. Name Pooh Bear. Yeah, is that family thing? Is that it's, it's, he's Big Bear. <laughs> who actually, works, right, with, who actually works with Killer Mike now? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. He works with Killer Mike. So, why are you now? And and talk about why it's important for you as a songwriter or even artist to want to be an artist, right? After all this That's success, like, why is that? I think that if it's written, you know, if it's written for you and, and if it's a passion, if you love it, for me, I just always want to do stuff that I love and this doesn't feel like a career. And at this present moment, being an artist is like such a new thing for me that it's like it's more passion driven. It's love. There isn't any money involved in it. It's like pure. Like what I what I really started off in the beginning, like doing music for it was just for the love of it. So this is the another phase where it's like, wow, I'm back doing this for the love and putting out you know, raising the bar, you know, raising the v the frequencies and the vibrations and making sure that, you know, it gets easy once you get people start flooding music, a million songs get released a month for, you know, for real frequencies and the bar to get, you know, brought down a little bit. So hopefully my music can, you know, reach certain people that I can influence that can keep the raise the bar. So your 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 I guess motivation yeah. is love for R&B and songwriting and music in general. So you're yeah. feeling like because streaming has kind of made this world where there's not a barrier to entry and just people are just throwing stuff out, throwing stuff out, that there yeah. needs to kind of be a recalibration. Because we had Division on here recently, too. Yes. Uh, 1985. Yeah, and, and And they were kind of saying the same things, where they were just kind of like, look, the someone's got to come along and say, look, it's things that are coming out is cool. It's cool. It's cool. But there's things that there's another layer that makes a song great and timeless absolutely and these other things is that kind of yeah that's definitely my you know a part of my my agenda is to just make sure people know that there's still great music out there and people can resonate with it without you know if they if they do a blindfold test and you play a bunch of songs you put one that's a real evergreen or a timeless record they stick out like a sore thumb so that's a part of my my agenda is to push music forward just keep pushing music forward and, you know, hopefully it, it connects with somebody and it's able to, to resonate with the right people. Uh, I'm looking at your credits. <laughs> he said goddamn like three times. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. 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 Yo, man, it's, it's crazy. Um, you, let me ask you, these are true. It's Wikipedia, so you never know. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. They got my him. age wrong for sure. Yeah, that says you're 53. I, I, I'm just kidding. Doesn't I, know. Know. <laughs> I, I will not be surprised. Um, Chris Brown. Yeah. She ain't you. Yeah. My favorite Chris Brown song of all time, written by this. No, man. come on. This is my favorite that one. That was a 35 minute. -er. You knocked it out. That was. Uh, I'm gonna tell you. That song was written while we were waiting on music from Just Blaze. Wow. He was like, "Yo, why don't you listen to this?" And I'm like, "You know, I don't write over loops or samples or 
I'm a, a writer. I, I want a pup. I want to be able to take care of my family. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I did that when the booth, at the time I was going to the booth and I was here in New York and um, just mumbled and put words and did she ain't true really fast and thinking like, all right, now we're going to work on it while we're in town for her. <laughs> yeah. That was the only song that made the album with she ain't wow. true. So, but you also did yeah. I Can Transform You. Yeah. Yeah, Orlando. Yeah. Um, what this, else? This? Uh, well, I mean, what do you mean, Justin yeah. Bieber? Yeah. That one worked out. That, that was okay. <laughs> that, was an, that was another one that, you know, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of. Really? Yeah. Why not? Um, I just didn't think it was my greatest. Um, Writing-wise, you just didn't think it... Yeah, I went, I wrote it really quick and from a um, from a different place. Um, uh, my, One of my favorite <laughs> pop records, my girl makes fun of me because I listen to the song all the time. And she's like, "You're the I, why do you listen to the song all the time? All the respect, but it's a, a kind of guilty pleasure. I'm the one DJ Khaled. Oh wow. I love that record. You wrote you wrote that hook too. Huh? I did the hook in the yep, in the yep, in the verse. Yeah. And the verse. Yeah. It was it was fun. I saw um, credits with Daddy Yankee and Jay Balvin. Yes, yeah, Daddy Yankee goes back to um oh my God. At first Impacto and Que Paso back in two thousand and five. But then again with, you know, Despacito. Yeah. The remix. And then Jay Balvin I worked on Energia on um No No Hetiti Low. On that record, no. <laughs> another plot twist, Shani. I don't, I don't know if you know this. He wrote, he wrote for Ja Cure too. Oh yeah, what? Unconditional love, all those records. Oh. The whole world cried. The whole album. I did a really? lot, a lot. Yeah, did like did thirty tour. records for Ja Cure. Yeah. Steven wow, yeah. Tyler. How about Steven Tyler. Oh yeah, yeah. Did the theme song for um the Pro Bull writing song um with Steven Tyler called Hold On. <laughs> And by it's the like way, slept theme. on. I know. I know he's not really hot in hip hop anymore, and yeah, did some weird things. The record you did with Yellow Wolf. Oh, man. Good Girl. Wow. What Good a Girl. Great I mean, the Confederate just, flag thing hurt Yellow Wolf. It hurt. It, 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 you should probably, you know what, what I mean? He, 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 he don't even know. It's a long story. He doesn't no, even know. know. But listen, those songs were, it was a good album. <laughs> he's looking at me like, okay. wait, what happened? Yeah, wait a minute. Am I, not, am I supposed to disassociate nah, myself from him now? Yeah, yeah. I had Yellow Wolf on here years ago, and he wanted to hold on to his southern roots and act like the Confederate flag. The Confederate, no, no, he didn't. Yes, he yes, did. Yes, he did. Oh, man, we have moved on so far away from that flag. Right. Now, yeah. I mean, some people have it. Oh, that's crazy. I think he just didn't get it. He was being indignant. Again, being indignant. That always gets people in trouble. Man. But, but you, the songs you did with him were fantastic. Thank though. you, man. Thank you. There's a lot of stuff on here. Kelly Rowland. Yeah. Pink Usher. Usher. Uh oh, Usher did cut up, caught up. Yeah, caught up. Yeah, that was 2002. Yo, let's let's start getting in your pockets. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about the money. The money. What's so the... now, but now before you do that, right? But there's an interesting story, and obviously I... I've known him for a long time. Um, when you were doing the Usher record, yeah. the 112, that working with Puff, even when you worked with Scott Storch yeah. for a long time, right. um, and was right in there. Um, how do you remember those? pieces of your life um they were just it was just me like super hustling um making sure my mom was I, my mom was always my focus and um i was just on a non-stop journey of working being taken advantage of you know at the same time but knowing that i had like a bigger purpose and it was like i just got to keep going and going and um and what know, was your health like what was your mental oh health my like? god my health i was 450 pounds um, you used to weigh 450 pounds? Yeah. Yeah, I can show you a picture. It's crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was 450, and I did, like, I naturally lost the weight over you. You naturally did. lost it? Yeah, I didn't wow. do the, the lap band or anything. Just wow. most people, you know, you got to change your lifestyle. So, oh, gee, yeah, you think? Yeah. That's incredible. It was, uh, it was a journey. My mind, I was definitely, you know, you know, on, you know, doing the, the young, you know, popping pills, and, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in a, wasn't in a great place um, mentally, physically. And I had to go through breaking down physically in order to stop doing sugar. And it was one phase at a time. And I stopped eating meat for like how 12 many years. years. This is important for people. How, over how many years was the weight loss? This was a, It was like a 12-year process, naturally. You know, in the last, I accelerated in the last three to four years, just me having a trainer and doing all these extra activities. But it was a slow process. What made you made that change? That it was, I literally, um, I remember just being 30 and breaking down. When I got gout, I got a Sty and I got um, gout, a sty, and my back, my my lower back went out. Oof. And I'm going through the airport in a wheelchair, and I was yeah. like, and the chiropractor I met with chiropractor, he was like, yo, you should try, you should change your diet, and he said you should try a raw diet. So I went raw for like 
11 months where it was like just raw d- vegetables and fruits yeah it, it's not it doesn't it's not as extreme it's, as what it sounds it's more like dehydrated there's people that make good dishes cuisines with dehydrated veggies but it's just still living food that feeds your body it's just not cooked over 98 degrees gotcha gotcha but um i went raw for a while and just you know cut all the everything sugar bread pasta all that just stopped eating all that stuff for years and years and years wow and um Started the treadmill, and then you know, being young and black, man, this is my my mentality. I want to say this: we're afraid to go to the doctor to get our blood work done, to get checked up, and yeah. get, just because you know. For me, I always thought I wasn't gonna be here that long, and it's like it's that sad enough. You know, your surroundings, you like, I don't care. I'm just gonna live and eat what I want. But it's really important that you go and get your blood work done and get you know get checked up, especially if you have kids or you got people that you're taking care of that depend on you. It's like it's better to know. Did you and, go when you, know, you were super heavy? I I know because I thought I was. I was like, yo, I'm gonna die anyway. So, so you didn't I, even start going until you I didn't lost start, some weight. I didn't start going until I I really thought I was dying, and I thought I had like a real lung problem, and I, um, a nutritionist was reached out. A nutritionist was reached out to, and he flew out to L.A. And he was like, look, there's nothing wrong with you, but I want you to get your blood work done so you could be a, a, have peace of mind. But I'm telling you, you're fine. And I'm like, oh, this is it. Like, I already know I've been waiting on this. <laughs> I'll Were go you get married my... at this time? No, but okay. I was engaged. So okay. that was another thing. I was like, yo, let's just get married so you can, at least you could just take my, you know, take everything I could leave behind to you. And she was like, no, you're tripping. You're not going to die. And Shout out to, shout to the wife, yeah, Ashley. Yeah, Ashley. Happy birthday, Ashley. Um, happy is birthday, actually, Laura, for real, for real, actually, okay? Ashley's is it birthday? Ashley's birthday? It is actually Ashley's birthday. Okay. But not yet. December 4th. So it's not, actually. It's coming. Ashley's it's coming. coming. Well, it's not actually it. Laura's birthday. No. It but happened. No, tell but, you but happy Laura's birthday. birthday, it was real present. I already, yep. No, for real, give her a moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> my no. birthday was November 4th. Oh, yeah. But he didn't know. He just randomly says that to people. Let me have my moment, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Take sorry, We're here. sorry. <laughs> yeah, but no, I just, you know, I really took for me to um I got my blood work done and, and the doctor was like you ready I'm like yeah you said 48 hours that was like <laughs> like 18 hour turnaround <laughs> I was like that was fast I'm not mentally there and then I was like he was like you're good he was like you know your cholesterol is perfect your blood pressure is perfect whatever you're doing keep it up and I'll see you next year and I was like I'm gonna live I'm gonna live so then at that time I was like oh I'm gonna make a couple hundred billion dollars now like now <laughs> I could stay alive where I could actually make a couple, some real income to be able to to help the yeah. people I'm supposed to help. So it's important to get your blood work done, no matter how afraid you are. You know, get checked up, get your, you know, get everything, uh, get the whole full board done when you go, and it's just better to know, and so you can combat it. You know, and really. So did you achieve making the couple hundred million? Couple hundred billion. He said billion. Oh, yeah. billion. 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 So Bezos, he wants he wants to go Bezos level. This multi cent billionaire, a multi cent. That's the actual definite term for it. Multi cent. Multi cent billionaire. I've never. Is anything heard over the hun- anything over a hundred billion is a multi cent wow. billionaire. Well, he, I don't even know the word. So he, he's on the right path. <laughs> so, but, but are you anywhere? Are you anywhere near this? I'm. I'm on my like honestly, with, by way of energy, yeah. Uh, physically, no, but <laughs> real, you know, Your mind uh, is aggressive. There. Oh, I'm, I'm there. I'm oh, actually, so did you, good. were you, you said you were being taken advantage of. Absolutely. Anywhere 112, those days, all the way. When did you stop being taken advantage you of? Know what? Were you ever broke in the process? Oh, it was a consistent thing. It was up and down as a songwriter. The average lifespan of a songwriter producer is two years, you know, so... Anything mm-hmm. after that is like you're just figuring it out. But, you know, you have your ups and you have your downs. And, you know, at a young age, I did a, a, a co-publishing deal when I was 20, not knowing anything. It was a song commitment, you know, where you got to have six songs come out per year on a major label artist. Mm-hmm. And out of those six songs, you know, you thinking, oh, I just got to do six songs. It's like, no, the six songs that are 100%. So if you write them with one other person, that's 50%. If you write them with two other people, that's 25%. So now you're looking at trying to have at least, you know, 24 songs. And you songs. don't know if your song's going to get placed. And you, you don't, don't even know if, if you're going to... You have no control over they're, whether they're placed or even when they're placed, if they're really going to ever be released and hope that it's on a major label. So you're only getting... At that stage <laughs> in your career, you're only getting paid if the song's... A radio hit, still to this day. So right now... Radio is the most important part of everything, just so you guys know. So, so that's important for you to say, but yeah. so right now, if you were to go write a record with someone... Even as established as you are, yeah. and the record never comes out. Yeah, do you never get paid? 
Well, I'm different because I charge up front. So now you charge up front. To even have the session. I've been charging up front for a long time. Okay. Yeah, so that's so that's my time. You're not wasting your time. No, because it's more so like if this doesn't th- come out or if you guys fumble the ball or your label fumbles it, why should my time right, be you free? Did the work. I did the work. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I agree. And it's with proven, that. and I would have to. You know, and I, you can only do that with a proven track right, record. And, what's uh, what's what's the biggest break that you've had in your career? I honestly think the biggest break. Um, was a song titled Where Are You Now for Justin Bieber with um, Jack U. And I would say that because that was a time when, like, first and foremost, Justin Bieber was believed in me more than any artist has ever believed in me in my whole career where I've done three albums. I've never done three albums for any other artist in my life. So for me... And his features. And features and, you know, and everything like that. So and I, I look at him like one, a break break, but the song Where Are You Now was when the whole world had canceled Justin. And, like, the media, everybody was, like, you know, he was 17 in front of the world. He was making mistakes. Mm-hmm. So everybody, that was, like, the first time I remember a real cancellation. Like, that was before cancel, like, culture mm-hmm. was a thing. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. And they really canceled right. Justin. And everybody was like, yo, why are you putting all your eggs in this? Why are you? I'm like, I really believe in him. Like, I just think he's young. And everybody sees it, you know. And he's way better than a lot of kids were when they were 17. Give them $60 million in cash. You know what I'm saying? So... Where You Now was a record that it was his, his comeback record. And for me, it was like I was going through a lot of turmoil and people was trying to get me out of out of his life just because, you know, for whatever reason. And that record was a breaking point for me because I told Justin, like, yo, don't tell anybody that I did this record. Because I don't, let's just see how this works to see if people are, like, trying to hate on me. And we kept it a secret. And it came out and it started connecting, catching on, catching on. And then it caught on. And then I was like, okay, now you can tell. That, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a little Trojan horse theory. And nice. it worked. And then that was the record that, you know, you know, it was this comeback record. And then after that was What Do You Mean and all, all the records. And so, now it's been, yeah. Now it's how long moment. ago was that? Oh, that was 2015 that happened. 2014. And do, and do now, so I want to play a couple of, like, well, let's play Anywhere. Let's play Where Are You Now. Let's play a couple of your, your hits from the catalog. Let's play your new song, Favorite Human. Um... Do you own those songs? Like, how does it work? Do you own that music? Does someone else own that music? Like, so I did do a catalog deal um, with the company called Hypnosis with Merck. Shout out to Merck, it's amazing. Um, and in doing that, you know, I was blessed to to be able to do a, an amazing deal where you know I still, even though I sold my catalog, I still have you know somewhat of a, 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 a ownership of it. Got it. And other things. And so, dude, like, because we hear so, the only reason I ask is because all day long, every day, there's, yeah. you know, on the internet, own your masters, own yeah. your songs, own, you know, you're not a boss, you don't sell you this, don't do this, you know. But what every, is the right you, thing or the wrong thing? That's the thing. So, as we, I was taught, hold, always, always hold your masters, always hold your masters. And I think there's a difference when you're an artist and you're a songwriter, producer. As an artist, you're you're not making the the bulk of your income from publishing and songwriting. So you're doing shows. So you can look at and be like, you know what, I'm gonna hold this for my family, it's legacy. These are me singing in my videos. For me, I'm like, I look at it like anybody else who's creating a business. I had to learn to step out of it and say, if somebody's willing to pay you 30 years into the future, right now, as long as you can invest it into something that's gonna earn you more than you will earn slowly over 30 years, it's the right move to do. So putting your assets to work. Absolutely, yeah. as opposed to just having something because it sounds cool, like, yeah, I own my master's. We're like, okay, but if somebody's going to give you 30 years, 30-time multiple right now for that, as opposed to a, a five-time multiple 10 years from now, when, when you're not you're not popping, what's the better business move? So you got, is that what you got, 30? I did. It was a, more of like a, a 15, 15 times multiple. So, so you sold your publishing? I sold one catalog from 1997 to 2018. Sold it. My first so anything, catalog. Anything after that? Everything after that is my new catalog that's, that's that yours. I've been I building. Sell that again at some point. I'm building it to sell it again. It's a business. It's no different than somebody having a product or a business and be like, that's I'm going to grow this business until I can get acquired for 1.4 billion because it just we did our annuals did this. Now you do a times 10 multiple. Oh, 10 years from now, look at the growth. Look how many people are doing this. Look how it's growing. And that's where you do your multiple. And then you have to make a business decision and say, am I going to get this money and just blow it? Or am I going to get this money and make it work for me and really turn that into the, turn that to a so billion? So you really, just to be totally frank, you really don't have to produce another record again. 
I don't, but I I don't want to feel like that because I, I don't ever want to feel like I made it. Right. I don't ever want to feel like... When you also don't... I think you said it early in the convo, it sounded like you're not writing and producing and doing the things you're doing for money. You're doing it because no. it fulfills it's you. It is. Way. It is. And just making sure I could continue to push music forward and stay ahead of it, hearing my influence and be like, okay, let me stay ahead of it and make sure people keep want people grow and they want to raise the bar and not settle for less. Um, so um, I guess my next question is for the people that you knew back in the day who see you now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, what's that? <laughs> what are those conversations like when you see a puff or you see a storch or you see... They don't recognize me. And then I was like, happy birthday. And they'd be like, Pooh Bear? And they'd be like, yo, what So the happy do? birthday thing, just so you know, is That's a scam. It's, it's a scam. For 20 years. 20 been, years. This yeah. guy will walk up to anyone as soon as he meet them and say happy birthday. And he figures it's a 50-50 chance. This is not, not true. 50 -50. <laughs> It's one of the three sixty. You are taking this too far. It is not a 50-50 chance. It is, but no, it's not even that. It was I was so shy and so overweight that I wanted people to know that I was weird immediately. So I would say happy birthday as like an icebreaker. Just so you know, if you're weird or crazy, it's okay. You can be that. You don't have to introduce me to your representative like everybody else does. <laughs> right. You can just be crazy. Right, right. So it was like, yo, happy birthday. And then after a while, it would be somebody's birthday like once a week. And they'd be like, yo, how'd you know? And I'm like, you just got to be careful what you think around me. You know what I'm saying? I might know your thoughts. <laughs> then, but then I would tell him like, nah, I do See, tell everybody scary. happy Told birthday every day. But then he came up with the most clever counter that nobody else has come up with a more clever counter. Congratulations. He said, happy birthday. I was like, congratulations. I'm going to tell you why clever. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you because it also hits that emotion of, oh, it's not my birthday, but what do you know? You know something? Congratulations. <laughs> and for me, I'm like, I got so much going on in my life. I'm like, yo, like, for what? What you talking? What you congratulate? He's like, what you ah, Which one? I fall for it every time. So <laughs> congratulations. A That's yeah. a good one. By the way, and that is a weird thing that people say to people of note. They'll be like, congratulations on all your success. That's right. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what's, what's really been happening? It's going to work every day. <laughs> it's going to work. <laughs> That's the success. It's, you know, it's all yeah. what you, you know, perception of success. So um, uh, you grew up in? Atlanta. Atlanta. I'm from New Haven, Connecticut, from the, you know, just to get really clear, New Haven is not where Oprah Winfrey lives. Anytime ask somebody much. ask me where I'm from, I'm, I'm like Connecticut. I'm like, oh, like no, I didn't grow up like that. We were super poor. New Haven's New Haven's poor. Yeah, yeah. all right. And so then you you moved to Atlanta. Yeah, how? Yep. I was 11. We were okay. we were homeless for a little while in New Haven after a tornado, and then um, we a had, tornado. Yeah, it was like the, one of the only tornadoes in like, Connecticut. Tore up your house. It was a part. We lived in an apartment. What years we talking? 1989, July 9th. And wow. then um, and in Atlanta, you went to a pretty famous high school. Yeah, I went to Tri-Cities. It was like, the like remember Fame, that yeah. movie? It was like a high school, but way cooler kids than Fame. Um, I went to school with my, my best friend, closest friend from like 13, Keenan Thompson. That's been, you know, he's the longest cast member on Saturday Night Live. He sure is. Yeah, we've heard of him before. Yeah. yeah. yeah we know <laughs> um, Michael Gougy, um, uh Outkast, Goody Mob, um, Escape. Uh, jagged, jagged Edge. It was one of those schools where was Jermaine was, Dupree the principal? No, I know, right? That would have been amazing. It sounds like we got to make a we got to make a, a movie or something like that. But it was something in, in College Park in the water, definitely, or some energy, some linear lines or energy lines or something like that. Wow, that's yeah. unbelievable. That's so and cool. so, did you play instruments or? I did. I played a trumpet, man. I still play. Like at trumpet. what level? I sat second chair. First chair is the best, so I was the second to the okay, best. So he's I was like, high. like Ricky in Bobby, band, you know what I'm saying? School. Yeah, I was in the concert band in middle school, and I was in Did the marching band. Did you Nah, because when I switched, to, when I got to high school, when I went to Tri Cities, I was playing, and they I, they had me in the marching band. But it was like a hundred degrees in Atlanta. I don't know if you guys been to Atlanta in August. You're saying you were too fat to march. I, I, not just too fat. The suit with the fat. It was like a triple layer <laughs> suit, and I'm out there marching. I'm like, I'm gonna pass out trying to keep my knees up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I want to sing now. Yeah, so I got I joined choir and drama. And start doing like I was the lion and the whiz. It was hilarious, you know. But um, it now was... does the trumpet help you with your songwriting and your singing at all? Okay, 
So the reason why I chose the trumpet, just to go back really fast, because I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music when I was a kid. My dad was a strict preacher. Ooh. My mom's super religious. No, like Stevie Wonder was like of the devil. So I just called like to say I love you. It was like, I know what you mean. I just called to say I know what you really mean. I'm like, no, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's a love song, mom. Uh, you know, but So I, got the, I only listened to trumpeteer, Christian trumpeteer music, a guy named Phil Drisco. And when I got older, when I got the chance to pick an instrument, of course, it's trumpet. And then as a songwriter, trumpets play the top line. So they play the main melody of the song while the chords support it. So it all kind of correlated to where, you know, me being a top line songwriter initially and being able to hear these melodies from basically they're like trumpet melodies. Mm -hmm. death, wow. yes. That's, yeah. crazy. That's the cheat code. I, I wanted to get I wanted yeah. you to give that gift to the people. Like, oh, yeah, they people can have I, they have that, all my gifts. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a and so here's another cheat code. Okay. Um what are what key and chord progressions is are most hit songs, would you say? Like honestly, C, strange enough, key of C, which is like the most common um key. Um, there is a, a there is like this real famous uh, chord progression that works for every hit. Um, I can't just say it out, but I could try to think of a song that has used it. And it's in most records, most hit records. And is it because of the vibration of those? What is it? I think it's the pattern. I think it's the way that, um, because no way to, even if you play it forward or, or backwards, it's the way it resonates and the way it moves your emotion. It's like this, this feeling that it's a, it's guaranteed a frequency that just your, your emotions can't deny, which is really what a hit record is supposed to be. And, and, what, and which, what's the chord progression? Do you know the chord progression for like sad things? For things that make you feel sad. Crazy enough, it's the same, same three one. chords. Yeah, and, and they're like known through that's the cheat code. And you can really, you can you, really Google hey, it's it. The, if you it's Google the it, it's like you choose three hundred hits, like of these same chords. Where, but it's just a different way of playing them. It's the octave you choose. Like even, even where you know. That's sad, but yeah, that's sad. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Those are the chords that those are the magical chords that are just flipped in different keys, and it's like you just write a whole new song to it. And most people don't know they're doing it. It's an accidental thing. Then you have the other people who know, like your people who play chords are like these chords always work. But then you write a, write a new song to it. It's a whole new whole new copyright. Wow. Yeah. This is my guy Pooh Bear, man. <laughs> no, man. He's really good at this. I'm 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 glad oh, we man. got to finally get you up here. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ebro. It's always fun. Nah, uh, man, it's my brother, you, man. man. Uh, Favorite human, the new single. Yeah. Um, this guy been contributing a lot of great music to us over the years, and uh, well, it's an honor to have you on the program today, man. Thank you. Yes. Man. Thanks, Boober. And happy birthday. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. Yo, for real. Hey, congratulations. 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 <laughs> Booking the bill is out tomorrow Thursday night. What's that? The book. That's the album. My album. You got an album. The whole album's done. I'm your done. friend. I didn't even know about it now. I, I thought it was just a I didn't send you a, Nah, it's the whole album comes out Thursday night. Book what? in the bill, yeah. Thursday night. Who's on the album? It's me, man. I don't have no features. No features this time. Wow. Yeah, Ooh. I'm just singing. And what's the album called? The Book of Nabil. The Book of Nabil. Who's yeah. Nabil? Nabil is, is my partner who, he's a poet who I hooked up with just because I wanted to see if I could, if, like, grow and, like, think outside of my mind. And I partnered up with Nabil and... Turn all his poems into songs and put hooks and so when you hear these words, it's like, yo, I'm learning these words as I'm singing them. I don't even know. I'm like shun and like these words. I, you know, I like school and all, but I didn't learn that much. You know what I'm so, saying? So, this is, so these are co-written. Yes. So this with, is 50, 50 well, this is Nabil. These are poems. Well, hence the Book of Nabil. They're they're poems that you he know, wrote. Yes, and I and just took he them. From? He's from Saudi Arabia. Wow. I thought y'all yeah. were friends. You don't even know this. He does. He knows. Oh, you know. Really? He, oh. Yeah, yeah. Come, he knows. I totally bought that whole thing. Happy yeah. Birthday. Happy birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Bill Thursday. Pooh Bear, man. We love you, brother. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, love you yes. back, man.